There we go. All right, everyone, thank you so much for coming to our Zoom webinar on selling your home during quarantine. Hi, I'm Stacy Sando with Coldwell Banker, Capital Gateway Realty. And with me, we have Elaine Shaka. Hi, I'm Elaine Shaka with Coldwell Banker, Capital Gateway Realty. And Cicely Sandoval and Donna Marie Nolan from Fidelity National Title. Hi, Cicely Sandoval with Fidelity National Title. And here is Donna. Donna Marie, I'm <laughs> Fidelity National Title. I'm Operations Manager for Northern California. Excellent. Thank you for joining us, ladies. Thank you for having us. Yeah, definitely. Okay, we'll dive right in. So oh, in the next 30 minutes, and we're hoping that this will be about 30 minutes, we have a lot to cover, but um, it's, we're going to try and condense it. So, um, and we're going to discuss the housing market specifically in Solano County right now. We're going to talk about how things have changed since the big pandemic has begun and what our job looks like now and how we're going to market your home, how you want to show your home and how accepting an, what accepting an offer looks like. Then uh, Cicely and Donna Marie are gonna go over title and escrow because that is their department and they're gonna talk about how that's working right now. And then of course, uh, at the end, we'll just summarize with, you know, if it's safe to transact during this time. Sounds great. And jumping right in. so. As a real estate agent, a lot of questions that I get are just, how is the market right now? People are just very curious. So this is something I felt was important to go over uh, during this webinar, uh, especially for a seller. So uh, as you can see, all of these are just data that I've pulled from our uh, local database, our MLS, and um, this system called Ergo. And this information is specific to Solano County. So as you can see, I've compared April from last year to April this year. And remember, this pandemic and everything began with the lockdowns and the shelter at home and all of that began in the middle of March. So I felt like pulling April's data was really good. Also, May is not over yet, so I don't have that available yet. So for the first point of data that I wanted to share was the sale price versus the original price. So in April 2019, you can see that the sale price versus the original price was 98.6%. That means a home that sold, that was on the market for 500,000, typically, or on average, was selling for 493,000. That's a $7,000 you know, decrease from that. So in April of this year, 2020, after this pand pandemic had been going, homeowners who were selling their home were getting 99.43% of the price that they offered at list. So that means that a home, again, for $500,000 was selling at four at, for $497,150. So the difference between last year and this year on a $500,000 house is about $4,000, just above that. Hmm. So that just shows you, I think it speaks a lot to pricing and uh, pricing your home well, of course, especially uh, during this time. Uh, I think that you need to price your home so that it's priced properly. Uh, obviously, you need to be cognizant of the market and speaking to an expert like your real estate agent and listening to them. Uh, I heard a quote recently and I'm going to read this because it's awesome. And it says, it doesn't matter if you have the best marketing in the world, if your home is overpriced. You are just telling more people that your home is overpriced. And that I think explains in a nutshell just how important it is to price your home at market value. So then uh, next I have the inventory. Um, this 1.7 and 1.6 from last year to this year, that is what we call the month supply. And this number tells you how many months it would take for all the homes that are currently on the market to sell given the monthly sales volume of that month. Um, four to five months is an average uh, for, to kind of explain that and put that in better terms, um, if you research in like Solano County, let's say uh, for easy math's sake, if 30 homes were for sale in Solano County and in one month only 10 homes sold, that would be the, mean that there were three months supply on the market. So 1.7 and 1.6, those are very low, low amounts of homes on the market. 
So that means our supply is low and supply and demand tells us, those laws tell us that when supply is down and demand is high, which it is because interest rates are at are unprecedented lows. So there's so many people in the market who want to buy a house because it's a good time to buy a house. It's also an excellent time to sell your house. And then over on to days on market, April 2019, an average days on market was 48 days. And this year in April 2020 was 39 days. Um, it means, okay, so at, days on market means the time it took from that home when it got went on the market to go pending sale. So they've accepted an offer and they have gone through a whole lot of contingency removals and things to get them to that pending sale, which means they are close to a close. A uh, typical escrow period is 30 to 45 days. So those numbers tell me that those homes didn't sit on the market for a long time. They were snatched right up almost Im immediately after they went on the market. So that is also good news for a seller. That means things are moving quickly. So uh, next I want to talk about marketing because once your home is on the market, this looks a little bit differently right now. So everything is essentially digital right now uh, because of the virus and people who do not want to be exposed. Uh, we have very strict rules on showing property. Um, and the best way to kind of overcome a lot of those obstacles is to have everything available digitally so that there's not a whole lot of in and out of your home. So gone are the days of those traditional open houses. So we're not going to go out and put out signs and invite the whole neighborhood into your house to walk through. We're going to make it possible for people to view your home online. So we want to limit those that exposure, and the way we have found to do that is with this virtual open house. Uh, some agents have chosen to use their phone and walk through your property and film it and talk about it, uh, giving the buyers a look at your home and able to tell them all the details instead of just looking at pictures where you're wondering, where does that door lead? They can tell you that door is to your very large pantry when you're in your when you're in your, they're standing in your kitchen, or these floors are hardwood floors. And it, anything and everything that you would be learning from physically going into that house, they're gonna try to cover that in that virtual open house. Then we have social media, online groups, Facebook. We can't put out flyers a whole lot. Um, you know, we, we're not putting door hangers on uh, your neighbor's doors and alerting them to, hey, do you know of somebody who wants to be your neighbor? Um, we can't do that anymore. Uh, we're limited in that that physical touch. So we've been doing a lot online. And how we do this is through, all the buyers are going to start online now. So they're searching online, they're searching everywhere. They're looking on realtor.com, Instagram, Facebook. They're looking on Cole Banker's website. And we want you to be as visible on these outlets as possible. And we want to give you maximum exposure there. There are also groups on these online groups that I'm talking about on Facebook that are, you know, some are called a Travis Air Force Base for Homes for Rent and Sale. And us real estate agents belong to those groups and, and buyers are looking for homes on those, using those groups. Uh, we also are a realtor association here in Solano County or Northern Solano, Northern Solano County has continued to have our weekly realtor tours or broker tours um, where we are still able to give your home exposure on that. So we're still showing all those agents and all those brokers who are in the area and attending those meetings, you're still getting all that exposure and they have the buyers as well. They have the people who are looking for a home now. The next thing I wanna talk about is just best photos, best videos, you want to use the best technology that you have and make your home shine. Have it photo ready, make sure that everything is perfect and use a professional photographer. That can't be stressed enough. Uh, next also we have available is a 3D Matterport. A Matterport is a three-dimensional camera system you can use to create a realistic, fully immers immersive experience. Uh, our photographers use a special camera to cap capture that imagery, collect the measurements, and process the data to create and edit and share a 3D rendering of your home. So if you wanna see what that looks like, I can show you.
This home I chose specifically because Stacy and I did a virtual open house on this home. And we took the buyers through this home virtually and the agent who had listed this home got an offer from one of those buyers who was at our open house. So we walked them through, we showed them this is your first floor, this is your second floor, and then we took them right in, this is how it looks from the side, and now we're going to take you right in. And we walked them through and we were able to tell them everything about this home. Look at those plantation shutters. Those tiles in this room are Spanish imported tiles. Uh, these are quartz countertops. That's a glass backsplash. Everything that somebody would be asking, we were able to describe and tell to them in detail here. So that makes it possible for somebody to really experience what your home looks like without physically having to be there. And I'll go back. The next Stacy is going to talk to you about how things have changed to show your home. So showing, we get questioned all the time on whether or not we can still show property and actually take a buyer in the house. Um, so before the coronavirus pandemic, we would hold your house open with an open house, uh, usually on a weekend, and try to get as many people as possible uh, through your home with the hope that your buyer attends the open house. But in this new normal that we are adjusting to, we want as few people as possible to enter your home. We are looking for quality buyers rather than the quantity of buyers. Um, our job as realtors is to protect our clients' interests and protecting your property now has an even big, bigger meaning because we also have to protect your family as well as your home. So this, first, uh, this protection starts by requiring, requiring all interested buyers to first view your home online using the MLS photos, drone videos, 3D Matterports, um, and just regular videos of the home. We recommend the 3D Matterport because just like Elaine just showed you, um, you're able to actually physically, not physically, but virtually uh, tour the home. Um, the next step is we have to require all showings to be by appointment only, so nobody can just show up even if the house is vacant. Um, and we want only buyers um, that are pre-approved. So we don't want the people who just like to go look at houses um, tromping through your house. Um, so we're gonna ask also that the buyer's agent send us a, their pre-approval letter so we can see that they are actually are a real viable uh, buyer. Um, we also will limit the number of people touring your home to no no more than two buyers and one agent at a time. And each person must also sign the, uh, the coronavirus advisory, which is another new form we got. And that has to be signed um, and sent to the listing agent uh, prior to going and see the house. And basically that, that advisory says that you have not been sick in the last two weeks. You have not come in contact with anyone who has tested positive for COVID-19 and that you'll wear ma masks, gloves, and shoe coverings. The shoe coverings uh, and gloves were just uh, decreased. We were lo loosening up a little bit. We got that notice today. However, if you're not wearing gloves, they want us to disinfect the house afterward. So all of the doorknobs, all of the light switches, things like that. To me, if you have gloves on, it kind of, you don't have to worry about what germs you're bringing in. So um, we also recommend that the seller turn on all the lights in the house, even if it's daytime, open as many interior doors as possible to limit the amount of people touching light switches and door handles. We also maintain a detailed log of the people viewing your home so that if necessary, we can uh, enable contact tracing for uh, anybody who gets sick. Hopefully nobody gets sick. Um, for sellers, after the showing, we recommend wiping down all the door handles, light switches, cabinet doors, and anything else that somebody might have touched. And since there are not any in-person open houses currently, it's especially important for sellers to have their home show ready at all times. Simple things like making your beds, put, putting up dirty laundry, taking out the garbage, no dirty dishes in the sink. And my personal pet peeve, no missing or burnt out light bulbs. 
I hate that. <laughs> and all of my sellers know that. Um, but small things like this can show the buyers that your, your home is loved and well taken care of. So we're going to move on. So we, we had a buyer come in and they decide they're going to write an offer uh, with their agent. Thanks to DocuSign and Zoom meetings, we are able to discuss offers you receive virtually and have you sign the offer or counter offer digitally. So we don't even have to meet in person. And since there's so little inventory, this is causing a seller's market and many properties that are in good condition and priced right are receiving multiple offers. One of our agents at Coldwell Banker Capital Gateway recently put a home on the market in Foxborough and in three and a half days active on the MLS it had 22 offers. So we are definitely gearing up and the buyers are there. So if you're on the fence about selling your house, you might, might talk to an agent and reconsider that. So, so you got all these offers. How do you choose which offer to counter or accept? With the coronavirus and the uncertainty of the future, you should cho choose the offer that gives you the best chance of closing escrow. The highest um, offer is not always the best offer. We'll review each offers each offer and list the pros and cons of each offer. We look for things like the size of the down payment, the type of loan being used, whether or not it's a contingent offer uh, and how long the escrow is and how many days for the buyer's contingencies. The type of offer affects things like the, the appraisal. FHA and VA offers have stri stricter appraisal guidelines than a conventional loan. Loans with larger down payments show a motivated buyer and decrease the importance of the, of the appraisal because it only has to appraise for the amount of the loan and not the full purchase price. Contingent offers. So a lot of people don't know exactly what that is. So this means that the, either the buyer has a home to sell um, their current property in order to purchase your home. Um, we would hope that the buyer's house is already in escrow versus one where the buyer's home has not yet been listed for sale. In a market such as the current one, you may, you may also be looking for a replacement property yourself, and your offer will be much stronger if your house is already in escrow. Um, so it's, sometimes we'll have a chain of several transactions that depend on each other each other to close escrow just like dominoes one falls and then the next one and the next one um, this makes it extremely important to accept the strongest offer that has the best chance of closing escrow um, uh, so buyer's motivation uh, another key to a successful closing is the motivation of the buyer if they're relocating because of a job transfer or military orders they'll be more motivated because they're moving regardless uh, other reasons could be a buyer's downsizing because the kids are all grown and out of the house or upsizing because there's a new baby on its way and the current home is too small. These reasons may be yours as well for the reason you're selling your home. Or you, it just might be that you're just sick and tired of this quarantine house. So, uh, so we are going to move on to title and escrow and Donna Marie and Cecily will take over from here. Well, thank you. Um, you know, I'm just going to lead in with what we've kind of been doing when the, the COVID-19 first started. Um, we were essential right off the bat, which we were very thankful for. But what we had to do is what the CDC wanted in our corporate offices is we had to do the social distancing. So we deployed about 70% of our staff at home. They were working from home. Uh, the great thing is we've always been able to work from home. We've had customer service titles, some of the back escrow offices. Um, so just getting them all shifted at home. We had a core amount in the office that were still socially distanced, um, which is within that six feet range, if not more. Um, so they were able to be within to do the support for the ones that were at home. Um, now, obviously, things are starting to lift just a little. Um, and we started bringing a few of the employees back in. So we're only at about 58% of the employees back. Um, once again, I do Northern California, so there's 14 counties and every county has different requirements. So we're abiding by that, but um, work has not stopped. It's been flowing just as seamless 
as prior and before. Um, it's just a little bit of work differently. We're doing screen to screen as we're doing this right now, where we used to be, you know, face to face with somebody, but it works out really well. You know, I can be here, someone could be in Sacramento, we're still doing this. Um, one of the other things that we've done is brought in sneeze guards. We have sanitation for uh, the gloves, the masks, those type of things. So if anybody were to come into our office, which at this point right now, our office is closed to the public, it's appointment only. Um, but if we know that's happening, our employees will be wearing a mask and have all those items. If the clients come in and they do not have it and wish to have it for their own safety, we'll provide it for them on that. Um, we do want to make sure everybody feels safe from our employees to our clientele, to you out there, uh, to make sure on that. One thing that has happened is fraud attacks and attempts have even risen more. I don't know if you guys are really familiar with cyber fraud. Cyber fraud in the last five years has definitely risen. I'll just give you a few little stats. 2015, it was $1.1 billion that had got compromised and taken. 2016 was 1.5, 2017 was 1.4, 2018 jumped up to 2.7, and 2019 is 3.5 billion. So you're speaking in the last five years, $10.2 billion that the little sophisticated uh, scammers uh, fraudsters have been able to pull this, these funds. And you never think it's going to happen to you, but you really have to be careful. There's some really easy things to be mindful on is, for example, you might go to Starbucks, Pete's Coffee, wherever that gives free Wi-Fi. Do not use free Wi-Fi. That, that is their, um, one of their main things that they can just pull your information that out there in the universe, I guess I should say, on there. The other thing is um, you want to use a two-person or two-factor authentication. Most companies are using that now. And if you're not familiar with that, there are companies that you can get set up with for a very minimal fee. So if you're sending a secure information out, what will happen is they'll ask your name, you put it in, they'll say, is this a sign? Is this a bus? That type of thing, you'll click on it. It's gonna email or text you a code number that you have to put in back to that um, application if you're on your iPad, if you're on your cell phone. And when it comes back, you'll put that in and you'll be able to, to get that information on your screen that you're using. Um, and you know, if you're not sure on something, use a trusted number. If you're getting an email or a text. Texting has been huge. They're interrupting um, people's emails and getting their cell phone numbers and texting the clients on that type of stuff. And if it just doesn't seem right, pick up the phone, call a trusted number, call your realtor, call your escrow company, and make sure um, that that information is coming from them. In February, for cyber attempts, have driven up 667% just as of February. That's the latest market that we've been able to get the stats on um, for that. The Another thing that we're doing is bringing the people back into the office. When we have the sneeze guard, I don't know if you guys know what a sneeze guard is. I have one right here. Let's see if you guys can see it. See right here? <laughs> Has a little pass through. Those are things that'll be used in our offices until everybody is comfortable. We have used the outside notary services with our company doors being closed to the public, um, you know, appointment only, and the notaries have just been phenomenal. They'll come directly out to you and they have their own procedures. That can still stay in place. I do think that there's gonna be um, kind of a hybrid of things happening out there, you know, some in person, some over the internet on here. So there, there's just a lot happening, but things are just plugging along as um, Elaine and Stacy had told us, you know, it's busy. It's busy right now. And I think there was a little bit of a scare factor for about two, two and a half weeks. And then all of a sudden, luckily in Northern California, um, 
people are still purchasing and refinancing. So we're very blessed with that. But I don't know if you guys have any questions on any of those or if I didn't touch on something that you would like to hear about. If not, see Sally. Hey everyone. So Fidelity's role and my role is to help assist Elaine and Stacy and other, other agents by providing them with this. So we have shoe coverings for their, you know, when they go inside of the home, we have face masks like Donna was mentioning appointment only at the office. And um, we have single use pins as well to provide all our clients and sanitizer. So we're making sure that we're trying to help you guys as much as possible to stay safe. You know, one more thing, I'm sorry. Can I jump back in? <laughs> yeah. I didn't touch on what is called gap insurance. So when, when this started, we had a couple counties, Santa Clara County closed down their recorder's office. So when you're selling your property or buying a property, um, once everything's taken place, it gets released to record. We have to record those documents of public record. Well, within our title policy, we have what's called gap insurance. And what will happen due to like Santa Clara closing, um, if everything is in and we're ready to record and the county recorder's office closes, we can close as of that date and disperse. You guys will be able to get your keys to the property sellers will get their proceeds out of the transaction. Um, and we just need to follow up within a 30 day period and record those documents. The buyer and seller will just sign what's called a memorandum of understanding, um, just stating that we're gonna be recording after the fact as a formality, but it does need to be a public record. So it will not delay. Matter of fact, about a week and a half ago, Napa County's systems were down for about a week. And we had to have that come into play. But it's always been there. It's actually a free uh, service. We do not charge for that. So I just wanted to add that in so that people know during the COVID time, if anything happens, um, we can still get your transaction through. Awesome. Yeah. That's that great. <laughs> so lastly, we just wanted to kind of summarize and of course, everyone's questioning, you know, is it safe to transact during this time? And there's no yes or no answer for that, but we're trying to make it as safe as possible as Cicely and Donna and Stacy and I have all been talking about. We're trying to make it as safe as possible and with the least amount of exposure and really utilizing those social distancing um, restrictions. Um, we just want to be respectful of everybody's views on this virus, and I think we all should be that way and be compassionate towards those people who are in fear of the virus. Uh, if we're able to accommodate the people who fear the virus most, we'll be able to accommodate all buyers and sellers. And we can accommodate sellers who want zero physical interaction through our virtual uh, meetings and through a DocuSign and all of everything that we can do digitally, as well as sellers who have no fear of the virus. We're more than happy to meet with you if you have questions about that. Wonderful. And we just wanted to say thank you Cicely and Donna Marie for being thank here. Thank you for having us. Thank great you for it. Yes. Thank you. Thank, you. Yeah, it was thank you. Really great information. We appreciate you sharing all of that with us and uh, the process and how it's different, but it's still moving forward. And that's just what we wanted to say is that it's, there's some more obstacles now, but it's still happening and it's still a great way, a great time for uh, your home to go on the market. And then if you have any further questions, um, we're going to stay on the line for a little bit longer. Again, I'm Elaine Shaka. I'm Stacy Sando, and we're with Coldwell I'm Banker, Capital Gateway. Donna Marie with Fidelity National Title. Nancy Sally Sandoval with Fidelity National Title. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. If you'd like to stay on the line, we're just going to stop recording for right now. Sure.